All right, what's up, guys? It's an emergency episode of the Always Race Day podcast uh, presented, as always, by the Carl Auto Group. We really appreciate their partnership uh, and everything that they bring with us. They allow us to do what we do here. I'm Connor Ferguson. I brought Glenn Savile on uh, to talk about the World of Outlaws penalty given to James McFadden uh, and Roth Motorsports today. And Glenn is a guy that is always worried he's going to say something wrong, even though no one's accused him of being offensive in 14 years, uh, from my calculations. But, Glenn, how are you doing tonight? Yeah, pretty good, man. Just uh, Glenn's in his engine shop. I'm wearing your shirt right now. I don't know if you noticed. Oh. So that's what I'm saying. We no, need, I... like, a bright blue, and we'll get, like, a boxing kangaroo on the front of it stomping yeah. on the American Eagle. That's what I – we got yeah, to dream up the idea and make it happen. <laughs> well, you, I got to get some results first before those will sell. I don't know. I don't think so. I think I think you could do it anytime you wanted. No. When you when you all hear the uh, Joey Gase interview on Sunday, uh, you'll know why why I said that. Mm-hmm. Uh, fantastic stuff coming uh, this weekend uh, from the Always Race Day guys. But uh, basically, from the World of Outlaws today, uh, they issued a suspension and a fine to James McFadden in Roth Motorsports for a failed tire test. Uh, from the new tire samples that were taken uh, last weekend at Peevely. Um, basically, the penalty is an $8,200 fine, uh, along with a four-way suspension um, for driver, owner, and all crew members, as well as a 500-point owner and driver penalty. Um, so pretty hefty stuff. Now, they are appealing the decision, so there's not – They'll be allowed to race until the appeal is figured out completely. Uh, so you'll still probably see him Friday night, uh, especially if or tonight if you're listening to this on Friday. But very hefty fines combined with the new tire rules. And I, Glenn is much more knowledgeable to this stuff. So you you were kind of saying that the new tires, everyone's doing stuff to them, obviously, and not doing stuff, doing illegal things to them, but figuring out how to prep these things uh, and how they react to different ways they're prepped. And that's probably what spurred this penalty, right? Well, it, there's a good possibility. Um, you know, I know traditionally, you know, most guys like to clean their tires and they, they groove them and type them. And, and, you know, some guys like to put a bit of simple green on them or, or, or different things. I'm you know, not, a, not accusing anybody of doing anything, but. Right. Um, I did, I, yeah. This whole podcast, yeah. if we say something that it, sounds pointed, I don't think either of us are pointing at anybody. I think we're, we're just yeah, talking about it, potential it, things. Yeah, just potential things. But, you know, it, it could be something as simple as, uh, you know, different processes that you did to your, your tires, the previous type of tire that we had. They just it doesn't react with the rubber, or, or the rubber reacts different, or um, you know, or you know, the benchmarks could be a little different. The tires could be a little different, and and the benchmarks of you know the parameters of the be- benchmarks aren't. Uh, when you uh, say when you say benchmarks, like when you say benchmarks, like what type of what what are you kind of talking well, about on the on that label there? So so who's your tire? Obviously, is a contract tire. They they supply a set of specifications to what the, the tire is supposed to come out as, um, you know, you, when that tire is finished, the end of the race, it could, it could, uh, it's supposed to conform to this, you know, th- this set of specifications, basically. As far as like um, air pressure size and stuff like that. Well, well no, no, no. Like rubber compound when they're, when they're going to okay. test tires and stuff like that, it's supposed to be, um, you know, that the tire, if, if the chemical compounds are this, this, and this, the tire should, measure this, this, and this, um, and that kind of thing as a, as a specification, you know, from a, from a, from a, a chemical point of view is essentially what they're doing when they check these tires. Um, and if the, you know, like the, the tire testing, it's a, it's a good idea in a sense, but at the same time, um, you know, if, if if their benchmarks are a little off or something's you know parameters aren't quite what they need to be or you know something just needs to be looked at or something like that um you know you, you could quite honestly be disqualifying someone for for something that's not necessarily you know anyone's fault it's just the you know that's just the way things are with the new tire so, uh, so i don't know how often they've checked these tires so far but if this is 
you know, if they're busting guys on the first night that they've ever checked them, then, you know, hang on a second. There, there could be a few things that need to be looked at here. Yeah, absolutely. Um, is So is this – so that was the first night they checked the tires? I don't know. Um, okay. Um, I haven't heard that side of it, but, but, but if it is, you know, and they, they've already busting guys for something that's not right. Well, yeah, and it, I don't know. It, they need to look at it. But so the yeah, new tires like, took I, over. I, I've known James for a long time. Like, yeah, they they've started running on these new tires what a month ago, something like yeah, that. Yeah, so they've only had them for they haven't had them for that long, and um, yeah, obviously the the drivers are or the, the crews more than anything it's not i'm not gonna say it's the driver's fault at all you know a lot of the drivers on the outboard tour don't necessarily have anything to do with that that specification or that you know that part of the car they their job is to drive and that's what they do they have a you know a special tire guy and he obviously you know confers with the crew chief before the um before anything's done but uh yeah if, if something's you know something's not right or whatever i guess the world of outlaws will look into it they'll you know they'll give them the benefit of the doubt so when you say the the tire compound at the end of the race, is that when they are taking them to these labs and they, they're testing if the rubber has been affected by chemicals? Is that kind of the yeah? yeah. Essentially, what happens is is you you pull up at the end of the race and you take a tire groover and you you groove a sample off the you know out of the, the block and and they get sent away. So um, you know, in saying that, heck, all you've got to do is drive through puddle of oil and that could alter your tire spe- specification as well so that's and that's the um, interesting part of this uh with the appeal process and, and having james uh remain in the series and everything and, and still racing uh to keep the integrity of that in case it comes back differently but yeah. you have to assume with these uh new tires that you know we might have a couple of these this year and it's becoming the year of of penalties especially in nascar um, and you know, scary accidents. And I hate that. That's what this, I mean, we're almost four months complete in the season. And I think we've talked mm-hmm. more about those two subjects, uh, than anything on the racetrack. And that, that's, that part sucks. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's not a good, good aspect of the sport. And you know, it's not something we really want to want to be too proud of, but, uh, I, you know, I think there's, there's a few little things that have got to be looked at that aspect and, um, need to be revisited basically so yeah. so every, everyone listening at home uh glenn and i are both a few bush lights deep uh and glenn is hearing <laughs> my voice on a delay uh i can see it through the video which is all all fine and dandy and glenn no comment this if you want um but roth motorsports and dennis roth the narrative behind them is similar to chip ganassi's narrative is chip chip likes winners and you race mm-hmm. Chip, Ganassi, Chip Ganassi and you you go out and win races. Uh, Dennis Roth's narrative is uh, win at all costs. Uh, and we have seen uh, Dennis Roth, uh, a driver from Roth Motorsports, uh, and everyone knows who it is, but uh, Aaron Reitzel a couple years ago with the chassis situation got suspended for the Knoxville Nationals, uh, and Casey Kane ended up, I think, driving that car, I believe, that season. Um, Another Roth penalty from the world of outlaws. Do you read anything into penalizing Roth Motorsports again? And do you read any, I, I guess, what is your experience with Dennis Roth? Because I, I mean, I've talked to him once, I think, but you know, the win at all cost thing has come up so much in the past two, three seasons between Aaron and James's tenure in that car. Um, and I don't want to say it's alarming or anything, but it, it does seem I, I am peculiar to kind of um, what that means. I, I guess I really don't have anything to say on it. J- James has always been a winner in sprint cars, even right. from the day he started. Um, you know, he uh, he's always been in good equipment. He's always been up the front. He's always always had a. Um, He's he's kept a pretty good track record, you know. Even even what the Americans don't know about him, even in Australia, he's 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 done a good job as a driver. So you know, I I think Dennis has got the right idea with with putting him in the car. The whole win at win at all costs thing. Um. Yeah. My I question, my more. question to that is that is that overplayed at all? Because that's all uh, you hear about Dennis. You don't hear Dennis. You don't hear Dennis likes playing the guitar. You don't hear 
Uh, Dennis is is a big wine guy. You don't hear anything about Dennis Roth besides he says when it all costs. It, it it's definitely it, it's definitely overplayed to the to the extent that um uh yeah. To the extent that they'd, be, know, that they'd be trying every, to bend every rule in the book every week. Yeah, every every car owner knows that you're not going to uh, to win every single night of the week. That's just the way it is. But um, I think I think Dennis knows that. You know, I, I I've never met Dennis personally, but I you know I I was I crewed on a World of Outlaw team a long time ago and all that, and and that was the driver that particular year who's now retired but he man he tore up some equipment they ran out of cars and wings and motors and everything and when he you're saying that guy drove for dennis yeah yep and uh when he did finally get victory lane i think he i think it was a dash i think it was a dash or something it might have been the feature i can't remember but we all i remember hearing him say on the over the microphone yeah thank god now the car owner get off my ass but (laughs) but uh he um I I I think people give him a bad rap for that. He it sounds like he Dennis definitely, he definitely leaves a driver with no excuses not to win. But it sounds like that, it sounds like he expects a driver to win regularly, and he's a team yeah. that kind of built itself and and has been around. But their main, you know, they have another business, but their big thing they they're a homegrown sprint car team, mm-hmm. and yeah, especially but, uh, if you're going to get outraced by Shark Racing, you know that's going to up the ante a little bit. But it sounds like he's just a normal owner, and he's expecting a solid driver to get solid results. Well, as, as a car owner, if you spend the money that he spent to put things in place to have the potential to win every night, you know he knows you're not going to win every night. But if you if you've got everything in place to that you know um, that will allow a driver to go out and do the best he can, he expects the driver to do the best he can. And, Absolutely. And that that's. There's a lot of that, you know. Now, if a driver consistently, consistently, you know, tears up equipment, you know, can't run, can't run top five, you know, consistently, you know, um, I think the biggest upset we ever talk about, bad, the biggest thing we ever talk hard. about, is how Brad Sweet won the World of Outlaws Championship on five wins. Yeah, well, no, no one's been close to doing that, you know. Yeah, not for a long time. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, it's, I, I guess it's just one of those things that, um, he expects the best of his driver because he's given them the best opportunity. That's all there is to it. Now, if you've got a, you know, a road crew guy in there, I, I don't know. I'm not familiar with who's on James's car this year at all, but if you've got a crew guy in there, that's got an idea and, and doesn't sort of tell anybody about it, you know, and something happens to a tire or, or something, or they're trying something or you know these tires react different. Like I, I don't know. I'm not. I'm not going to insinuate that anybody. You know, it's only cheating if you get caught. And and so I guess uh, you know if they were doing something to the tires last year and these tires react different to the same process, well, you know, you're going to get caught. I guess. But at the same yeah, time, like I said, absolutely. I'm not insinuating anything. But but at the same time, if uh, if these tires are different and you're still doing the same things as last year, that might be a might be something that needs needs to be looked at, and, I, and it's it's quite possibly just a, um, yeah, it, it it puts puts everyone on notice essentially. So yeah, yeah. And like, like you said, I mean, if you can, so to me, and tell me, tell, call me stupid for this because I really don't want to have this opinion, but you you've pushed me toward it. The, to me, if <laughs> if you can drive through a puddle of oil and change the compound of your tire to where it's gonna come back in a test lab and be considered illegal, why the hell are we doing it? How can we make that process better? Because to me, if you just have a puddle of oil on the ground on accident, well, that that can or is that not is that so uncommon that that's not like I, I'm maybe I sound crazy right now, but if that's not uncommon, you know. Well, and th- and that's the thing. It- I, I, I'm not 100% sure because it's been that long since I've watched them do a tire test. I can't remember what the exact process is. Have you been in these labs? I've never been in a lab, no. Oh, but okay. I, I want to get into one of these labs and see what they do. Oh, you can go into them. Yeah, they're just... They're just <laughs> the I don't know where they're at. Like oh, they might be in um, China for all we know. No, no, no. Uh, I can't remember the name of the place. It's, I think it's... I've seen it listed somewhere on the intraweb. 
Yeah, it's got to be in, it's got to be in North Carolina, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah, I can't I can't. It's in that area somewhere, somewhere in NASCAR land. At least we've confirmed it exists. Yeah. Oh, it doesn't <laughs> exist. But, you kidding. know, like like last year, the, the same thing happened with with USAC and the World of Outlaws. You know, yeah. the, the the World of Outlaws said no, your tires are illegal. The USAC guys said no, they're not. Well, that was, you know, send your tires to two different labs. That's they're going to get different results. So. Yeah, and I'll, I'll throw a little nugget in for the people that listen to this uh, podcast so that they know you can get some premium info, I guess, uh, listening to the <laughs> ARD podcast. But last year when Cannon McIntosh got his tire test uh, deemed illegal, um, I was asking guys who have drove midgets, uh, like, what goes into tire tests? What are your opinion on them? You know, what? what should we do about him? I was getting a couple guys. Uh, there's an interview with Mitchell Moles. That was really good. I remember uh, it was when we were at Houston. So look for June, 2022 on the YouTube. Uh, but I asked buddy Kofoid uh, to do an interview about it. And when he asked what it was about and I told him, he goes, Oh no, I'm not even touching that. No way, Connor. And just mad respect from a young guy to, you know, I don't want to touch that sticky situation uh, cause of where I'm at as a driver. Um, mm -hmm. you know, whatever you might say, Glenn, I, yeah. I promise no one will come after your reputation. I got you. Oh, I, I'll I, defend you. Know, I'm going to say we're scraping at the bottom of the barrel when I'm considered <laughs> the expert. <laughs> um, hey. No, look, I, I think the tire testing is a good thing. Um, it, it's, it, all it does though, is keep the honest guys honest. The guys that are going to cheat, they're still going to cheat. It's just the way it is. Um, like I said before, it's only cheating if you get caught. Um, you know, the like the other thing is too. You know, you got to look at it from a different point of view. Okay, you you're a, a low buck guy that goes and gets throw off tires, like second hand tires from from teams that have got a couple of nights on or a night or two, or whatever. If the team that they've bought them off has treated them, who's at fault? The guy that's taken the peel offs that that runs well, or, or right. the, you know the the team that did actually treat them. So there's there's other issues that it sort of creates, I suppose. But um, at the end of the day, it's good and consistent. Like consistency is what the sport needs, I suppose. So if they do it, they stand stand by it, and they back up their they back up the claim, and everybody just goes and buys new tires. Then yeah, it is what it is. You can't you can't argue with them. They got to. The end of the day, you know. He who's got the got the gold rules and unfortunately the world of outlaws got the gold so it does and obviously it, it, this doesn't happen a time you know they're not it, these teams are smarter than to have a spray bottle of chemicals and spray them openly in the pits where anyone can go with a pit pass right like any media member oh, could see be, someone spraying just, chemicals on a tire you'd be surprised oh yeah <laughs> all right fair <laughs> Next time we walk the pits together, when you're when you're on always race day full time, we'll walk the pits together, and you can just point stuff out to me, and we'll go right up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Smell that? <laughs> <laughs> no, but it, it's obviously not happening between every team every week because if it were, and that situation occurred, you know, Paul Silva would have gotten dunked on for oh, illegal tires yeah. a couple of times. Yep. Yeah, but like I said, you know, it, it's. It, it might it, it might just be a simple case of what we were doing last year doesn't work this year and and you know I, I remember with the USAC deal they the big claim was oh we we're using simple green or mean green or something like that or super clean or something like that on our tires and and it's it's soaked through well these tires might just react a little bit different there might be something a little bit different in the rubber that reacts it changes some sort of compound somehow the it is what it is. You can't change it. It's, you know, okay, we can't do that anymore. We're busted. So, yeah. Or if we do, we're running, we got, we can only run fourth. Yeah. So, uh, it's, dude, it's, it's tricky just because there's so many things that it could be. And mm -hmm. you, you can hear in the world of all us did not post in the statement what specifically was up with the tire. I, I found that mm -hmm. kind of, kind of different from what USAC officials posted uh, when they yeah. had their uh, penalty. But the appeals yep. process has not happened yet, so I think we need to 
wait for that. And the other thing was, and why I was texting Glenn tonight was I, I asked him if he had James McFadden's phone number uh, to see what James had to say. And but anything that they say is just not your hookup, Connor. Yeah, no, they're gonna they're just gonna <laughs> reply and be like, we were just doing normal stuff to our tires. I don't know why I don't know why I would come back like that. We've been using the same stuff for five years, and no one's ever said a thing. And that mm-hmm. you know, plausible deniability, right? Like, yep. I think it's just yeah. it's tough. Um, it's tough on the heels of that Aaron Reitzel penalty, and I know it was two years ago. But that's what everyone is bringing up today is like, here's Roth cheating again. I think it's completely unfair to say that See, at even, the same even time. That, even that frame deal at the time, like it like goes back to what I said a moment ago. Yeah, that was, a, that was a legal chassis at one time. It was at one point. Yeah. But, you know, if, if you've got a road crew guy that, that decides that, hang on, we need to, you know, when, when the pressure's on, we, we need to start getting some results. You know, you've got a road crew guy that's, that's going to run the gauntlet on whether we get checked or not. Um, but no, but that one, I don't think was really a road crew guy. I think that was the whole team's decision from the interviews I watched and uh, their argument on it, just to give some more background on what that penalty was, was that this, this chassis has been legal and it, it is our fastest chassis. So we're going to mm-hmm. use it and we're just going to hope they don't notice uh, because for whatever reason it yeah. had been deemed illegal. And I think it was uh, how thick some of the tubing was on the chassis. Uh, and it needed, yeah, or right. how thin it was. Sorry, I said that. I said that wrong. It, was, but yeah, it needed, it needed more, to be thickness. thicker. Yep. Yeah. And, and it, it, that's a whole safety thing. And to go back to what we've been talking about all year is safety and penalties, and it, it all mm-hmm. wraps into one with this story tonight. And yeah, I, I thought it was important to get you on, especially, and I appreciate you taking the time. Um, yep. But it's yeah. It, I mean, it's it's a very complex, you know, onion layered story going oh. on right now. Yeah, definitely. There's, there's. I'm sure there's going to be more to it, but you know, as, as a character reference to James, he's James has worked like people don't realize about James. Like he's had a lot of good opportunities that he's been able to take advantage of and and get the results over the years. But cheating, I that wouldn't be the first first thing that comes to mind when you talk to James. He races hard. He he's a he's a good good racer you know a good ambassador for the sport so if there's something going on I, I definitely don't think it's him i think it's it's something that um that the team has you know if they've knowingly done it then hey rightfully so they they deserve to be penalized well, this, but this if it's you know if it's something that they, that they haven't done or it's just like i said it's something that's carried on they've, they've always done it never been caught well you know maybe it is what it is and and uh it's we're making mountains out of molehills yeah, I mean, what you said about the road crew, I think, makes a lot more sense with you knowing James. Glenn's an Australian native, uh, builds engines, has ran sprint cars uh, for a long time. I've watched him wheel a few times uh, between Knoxville and, and Oski, and the dude's mad impressive and even funnier when he gets a few beers on you. So uh, I did a bad job introducing you, my bad. But that that makes a lot more sense uh, as to why you would think it was a road crew guy uh, and that was the situation at hand here. Yeah. Yeah. I look, I, I, you know, it's, it's, it's just, it's one of those things in the sport that, you know, you kind of just got to let, let time tell what it is. And I'm sure we're, we'll know in a couple of weeks or a couple of months when, when everyone's back to, back to race and everything's back to normal and, and all that, you know, um, do you think that'll be? Do you think that'll be after James McFadden serves a four race suspension or not? Uh, What's your I prediction? That, um, I'm sorry, I didn't tell Glenn I would ask for a prediction on it. A prediction on? And I don't, I don't want to give mine. So that's, it's all you. Glenn. You got it. You're, well, you're I, on I, deck. I guess. I guess. I. I. I don't know. I. I, I suppose it, it depends on whether they want to make an example of him. You know, it is it is definitely a good way to get someone off the tour if they didn't like you on the tour. Um, yeah, you know, I'm not I'm not going to insinuate that that's happened before, but you know, Hang I'm on sorry, I've been on I've been on mute. I opened another yeah. beer, so I I muted the microphone. Oh, is that what that was? <laughs> <laughs> so, so my theory on how the four race deal with the outlaws kind of came to fruition and everything because it seems kind of weird it seems kind of uh 
unnormal. You know, like mm-hmm. what series would be like, yeah, you can run four races, but not five, right? Yeah. My theory is that they kind of crunched the numbers and said like, all right, well, they're going to have an 11 race high limit season championship. And mm-hmm. if all 12 of my World of Outlaws guys go to every race that's midweek and kind of put around World of Outlaws races, mm-hmm. well, if there's 56 cars showing up, even with that restriction, this would be the top sprint car series in America. And it would take the top sprint car series in the country from the world of outlaws that races every week, Friday and Saturday, and is kick ass and every race matters. Every race matters the same amount, uh, aside from the non-point Knoxville nationals, obviously. Um, and that, you know, the prestige is never going to be taken away from the Knoxville nationals, but Mm -hmm. you take the whole season and it's like, okay, well we can watch 87 races or we can watch the best of the best run 11 times out of the year and all 11 races matter so much more because there's only 11 of them and that that makes it bigger and better because it'd be like an all-star sort of series not all-star circuit of champions which i still Mm -hmm. have gripes with them being named the all-stars but the high limit tour (laughs) without that without that agreement the world of outlaws reached this year the high limit tour would be the all-star series and you mm-hmm. have Kyle Larson running full time, and all the World of Allies guys running full time, and no, there would be no attention uh, that wasn't taken away from the World of Allies if that was the situation. So that that makes more sense to me as to why that got to that number. And also, I you know I don't think they would want James McFadden to get off the tour and go run that series. So there's got to be something here that tip the scales to where they have to say like, yeah, uh, this came back so far on this side of the line that we, we have to penalize you. Do, 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 do. Conspiracy theories abound, man. Who knows? Yeah. No, I put my tinfoil hat on for that. That's one I came up with this yeah. week. And I, I don't know. How many, how many nights have the outlaws done though, since they started on these new tires? The first think- night was it, was it Lincoln? So yeah, it was in Mar- it was the first only, weekend in March. So let me look up their schedule and see if they've we- only done about four nights on them. Oh, they've done more than that, eight or ten. Okay. I think so. Okay, let me hold on. Can we go to twenty twenty three? I'm thinking of between rainouts and other bits and pieces. Because Rico won the first race on the new tires, and he didn't know that they had new tires. Yeah. Yep. You you saw that interview, right? I was I was. I- I didn't see it, but a, a friend of mine. Knows I was laughing my ass off it. because because he was like, "Yeah, I thought everyone was just pulling my leg." Mm-hmm. <laughs> and yeah, he won on it. Yep. So the race after that, oh, that's Lima. Okay, so we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Suck on that, haters! I counted perfectly. Eight. <laughs> Oh, well, there you go. That's that's a half half a night's race right there for four nights to, to give you a total of four. <laughs> right. <laughs> so if, you, if you're racing, you're only running the B-man. That's kind of how the tires behave there, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. There you go. So, no, I, I don't know. I, I think it's – look, if, if it creates some consistency among the sport and, and, and sort of, um, you know, it gets everybody back to, to even keel um, – yeah, it's it's a good thing, I suppose. I don't know. Yeah, but, like so you, you're basically saying um, if it wasn't there, it, it would turn into uh, a series with uh, what? Gosh, what, what do Australians call the uh, the drop bears? It would turn into a series of drop bears, right? A series of drop bears? What? You've heard the you've heard the term drop bear, right? Yeah. They yeah, drop they, from the tree. Yeah, you, that's like an Australian. You got, you, got to, you got to eat Vegemite to to get rid of them. Yeah, I'm, I'm not doing that. I've heard the only thing I've ever heard of Vegemite is that it's gross. God, I'll really. Tell, it's we'll great. do a, we'll do a video. I'll eat some with you. What's it taste like? Uh, oh, it's pure bliss, absolute heaven. It's bliss. Heaven a, he, yeah, heaven on a heaven on a sandwich. Heaven between two slices of bread. None of these are flavors. You're saying it tastes um, like queso? Tastes like nacho? No, 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 no. It, 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 it's very salty. Oh, it's made I, of I would it's probably made like of, it then. 
It's it's the byproduct of brewer yeast. The biggest problem Amer- Americans have with it is they put it on like three quarters of an inch thick, and you're supposed to just have it thin. That's why Americans don't give it such a bad. Run. Gotta be like they butter on the on side of toast, yeah. Yeah, they try and put it on like peanut butter. Well, peanut butter it doesn't matter how thick you have it; it it just tastes the same. Vegemite, the thicker you have it, the stronger it tastes, and that's what <laughs> people don't like it. <laughs> but I don't know. It puts air on your chest. It's good for you. Uh, well, this has been great. Uh, I got to get back to watching the NFL draft. It's been like 20, 30 minutes, so we've probably gone through three whole picks now. They dragged this thing out, man. Uh, the NFL draft? Yeah, I got I to make sure the Iowa State guy, if he gets picked, oh, well, I've got to be, you've gotta be on alert. That's the helmet football stuff, right? Yeah, yeah the yeah, helmet, helmet football helmet. stuff. Yeah, and they, yeah. they have this TV show where they just talk and talk and talk, and every pick that they're going to put on the – TV has been tweeted out before they can, like minutes oh, before, before they, they can put it. on the TV. Yeah. If you're even oh. just casually scrolling on Twitter, you know what the next pick is going to be. Oh, and, and here you are talking about race cars when you should be do, giving uh, giving exclusive interviews. Oh, no, we're, we're early in the first exclusive, round. It's all good. Exclusive tweets. <laughs> yeah. I'm not the one putting that stuff out. I'm not that big. Even, oh, if I, even if I was, I'd, I'd want to be down with the world of outlaws, with the NFL of dirt racing, and not with the actual NFL. So that's different, different bridge. <laughs> Fair enough. We won't cross it then. <laughs> yeah, right. All right. Well, thank you, Glenn, for uh, joining me. I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, little emergency podcast, and uh, have a good rest of your weekend. We'll be back on Sunday. Joey Gase is on. I'm telling you, uh, if at any point in the interview you're like, "This is boring" and "This is dry." Keep listening. There is uh, one answer specifically to a question that lasts three minutes, and it's fucking bliss, as Glenn would say about Vegemite. So appreciate you all. Enjoy your race weekend. We will see you on Sunday night.